Hello, in this video we're going to look at some more sample test questions dealing with comparative advantage. We're going to do some graphical questions. So we, here we have the production possibilities frontier for Lee and for AJ. AJ's in blue, Lee's is in yellow. And so we're going to look at these uh, following statements. Lee's absolute advantage is in shirts. Let's determine if that is true. So Lee, if Lee spent all his time producing shirts, he could produce 10 shirts, whereas AJ could only produce six. So since 10 is greater than six, Lee does have an absolute advantage in shirts. Statement two, AJ's opportunity cost of a sock, AJ's opportunity cost of a sock is one shirt. So here's AJ's PPF to calculate the opportunity cost of a sock. We're going to take the vertical intercept and divide it by the horizontal intercept. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So every time AJ produces a sock, he gives up one shirt. So that is true. Lee's opportunity cost of a sock is 2.5 shirts. So let's look at Lee's PPF and calculate the opportunity cost of producing one sock. It's going to be the vertical intercept divided by the horizontal intercept, so 10 divided by 4, or 2.5, is indeed Lee's opportunity cost of producing a sock, one pair of socks. So Lee's opportunity cost of a sock is 2.5 shirts. And question 4 here, or statement 4, AJ's comparative advantage is in socks, so we're looking for the low opportunity cost producer of socks. And as we determined up here, AJ's opportunity cost of a sock is one shirt, which is less than 2.5 shirts. So AJ does have a comparative advantage in socks. So all these statements here are true. So the correct answer here will be D, statements 1, 2, 3, and 4. Moving on. Same figure here. And let's evaluate the following statements to see whether they're true or false. AJ's absolute advantage is in socks. So if AJ spent his entire day producing socks, he could produce six socks, whereas an equal amount of time, Lee could only produce four. So that statement is true. AJ's opportunity cost of a shirt is one sock. So we're trying to calculate the opportunity cost of producing one shirt for AJ. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take the horizontal intercept this time and divide it by the vertical intercept. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So that is correct. Every time AJ produces a shirt, he gives up producing one sock. Lee's opportunity cost of a shirt is 0.4 socks. So is that true? To calculate the opportunity cost of a shirt for Lee, we're going to take the horizontal intercept 4 and divide it by the vertical intercept. So 4 divided by 10 is 0 0.4. So this statement is true. Every time Lee produces a shirt, he gives up producing a little bit less than a half a sock. Lee's comparative advantage is in shirts. So that's going to be the person that is the low opportunity cost producer. And as we determined here, Lee does have a comparative advantage in shirts. He only gives up 0 0.4 socks to produce a shirt, whereas AJ gives up a little bit more. He gives up a full sock to produce a shirt. So this statement is indeed true, statement four. Therefore, all statements are true. Moving on. Okay, let's evaluate if these statements are true. Doug's absolute advantages in mugs. So we want to compare the five mugs here for Doug with 10 mugs here for Ava. So no, Ava has an absolute advantage in mugs. She can produce more mugs in a given period of time than Doug. Statement one is false. Ava's absolute advantages in bottles. No, that's false. Neither Ava nor Doug have an absolute advantage in bottles. They both, with a given amount of time, can produce 10 bottles. So statement one and two are false. Ava's opportunity cost of a mug is one bottle. So looking at Ava's PPF here, to get the opportunity cost of a mug, we're going to take the vertical intercept of 10 and divide it by the horizontal intercept. So that is correct. 10 divided by 10 gives us one bottle here. And Doug's opportunity cost of a mug is two bottles. That's true. 10 divided by 5 gives the opportunity cost of producing one more mug, and that is going to be two bottles. Doug's comparative advantage is in mugs. No, that is incorrect. Doug has a higher opportunity cost of producing mugs. Doug gives up two bottles every time he produces a mug, whereas in statement three, we learned Ava only gives up one bottle to produce a mug. 
So the correct answer here is going to be just statements three and four, the correct answers. Okay, moving on. Okay, let's see which of the following statements are true here. Uh, trying to see who has a comparative advantage and which good. Uh, Ava has a comparative advantage in bottles. Let's see if that's true. Every time Ava produces a bottle, she gives up 16 divided by 8 or 2 mugs. As for Doug, every time Doug produces a bottle, he gives up 10 divided by 2 or 5 mugs. So Ava does have a comparative advantage in bottles. She gives up fewer mugs to produce a bottle than does Doug. So statement A here, this first statement here, is true. Doug has a comparative advantage in mugs. Let's see if that's true. So to calculate the opportunity cost of producing mugs for Doug, we're going to take the vertical intercept 2 and divide it by 10. So we get 1 fifth. Every time Doug produces a mug, he gives up 1 fifth of a bottle. As for Ava, she gives up more. 8 divided by 16, she gives up a half a bottle to produce a mug. So statement B is correct. Doug has a uh, comparative advantage, a comparative advantage in mugs. And statement C is incorrect. And so the correct answer here is going to be A and B. Okay, that's it.